Hello, sir. Uh, can we start the session now? Dr. Prabhupada, uh, can we start the session now? Yes, you can start. Uh, uh, okay. Can you hear me? Yeah, perfect. Just on the right, right. Just in, uh, okay. Uh, not, not anything. You can... Yes, uh, I can see you right now. Think, uh, can you see me? Okay. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. A warm welcome to all of you for joining today's event, uh, Sanam International Trade Center presents Trade Wins, Episode 1, on Emerging Contour of Bangladesh, India, Japan, Triangular Cooperation. This is Rafi Ahmed, currently working as a research assistant in Sanem and your host for today's session. Before jumping into the background of today's discussion, I'd like to give you a short introduction about Sanem's International Trade Center. So uh, recognizing the evolving complexity of international trade, Sanem established International Trade Center in October 2018. By fostering knowledge and expertise, Sanem International Trade Center empowers students, researchers, policymakers, businessmen, and other individuals to navigate ever-shifting landscape of global, global trade. The center shares lights on the trade dynamics and the cutting edge international trade topics through workshops, training programs, and capacity building events like today's. Isha Charmi, Senior Research Associate, Sanem is currently the coordinator of the center, and Mohammad Abdul Jabbar Shakil, Research Associate of Sanem, is working as a co-coordinator. Now uh, let's shed some light on the background of today's event. Bangladesh, India, and Japan both strong cultural, economic, and strategic ties. Japan and India are have been always key development partners for Bangladesh. And the Bangladesh-India subregion is a focal point for regional initiatives like BBIN and BIMSTEX. Japan's involvement in development projects in Northeast India creates a platform for trilateral cooperation. Both Japan and India are heavily invested in Bangladesh infrastructure and pre-trade agreements are also being explored. So this growing trilateral relationship has the potential to shape regional cooperation in the Bay of Bengal, a stronger partnership could attract the investment to Northeast India and improve the connectivity. The first episode of this series will delve into the specifics of emerging triangular cooperation among Bangladesh, India, Japan, their contemporary economic dimension and shared challenges way forward. We are really grateful to have South Asia's one of the prominent freight economists and Sanem's old friend, Dr. Provid Dev with us. Dr. Day is currently working as a professor at the Research and Information System for Developing Countries, RIS, New Delhi. He has over three and a half decades of full-time research and teaching experience in India and abroad. He has been conducting policy research for government of India and several national and international organizations like UN agencies and multi-development banks. He was a visiting fellow in the Institute of Developing Economies, Asian Development Bank Institute, Korean Institute of International Economic Policy, and visiting senior fellow of the UNESCO. So before welcoming Dr. Probite, just want to keep, uh, keep you remind a few housekeeping roles. Participant, my microphone will be muted during the discussion. And after the discussion, participant can ask question, comment their uh, options uh, by raising their hand and or simply write in the chat box. On behalf of Sanem International Trade Center, I coordinate welcome Dr. Probite. Over to you, Dr. Day. 
Thank you, Rafael, uh, for the introduction. Um, I think everyone uh, present today's conversation, um, most of them are, I think not most everyone is a Bengali origin. So what I'm going to do, you know, I'm going to make the presentation in Bangla. Let it be, you know, a Bangla session. Um, and instead of borrowing Queen's language, I feel very comfortable speaking in my mother tongue. So, shall we go ahead in Bangla or uh, in English? Uh, Dr. Day, uh, you can choose uh, whatever you like that you prefer. Okay. So, uh, so you know, I will have to have both mixed. I think one or two. Uh, maybe, you know, um, uh, from local missions and here, they are not familiar with uh, Bangla. So, I'm going to be... If it would be in English, that would be great, as I am from India. And uh, UP, Pradesh. Acha. So I'm going to have it in, you know, uh, both uh, in Bengal, Bangla and English uh, together, wherever, you know, possible, I will try to explain. Time is, um, as if I understood it, it is about a 40 to 45 minutes. Uh, and um, uh, I'm not going to discuss here, you know, uh, the hardcore economics. This is not the place. What I'm going to uh, you know, argue uh, the way forward in the India, Bangladesh, uh, and Japan, or let me be politically correct, Bangladesh, India, and Japan in alphabetical order. Um, how do you strengthen the, the relation? My background is economics. I'm not an international relation and political science. So I will try, you know, as you know, I'm a handicapped, you know, in IR theory, completely zero. But I'm going to put some data statistics. Uh, I hope you, you will find it useful. I have extensively traveled Bangladesh, India, uh, and, and I I'm keep you know, visiting. So I have more hands-on experience. I'm not a professor at a university. I'm a research professor. So you will find my presentations in a more kind of you know, applied and policy focused. If you have any questions, you can put it in the chat box. The presentation which I'm, I'll be doing, I will be sharing the PPT soon after my presentation for the SECAP conversation carrying forward. So let me share uh, my uh, PowerPoint. So um, how do I... Uh, can you allow me to share it? Yeah. Okay. Sometime, you know, uh, you own... Uh, in case my slides don't move forward, kindly alert me. Sometimes it, it, you know, it doesn't move forward. So, um, uh, can you see my slides? Is it coming well? Uh, yes, Dr. Pravid, we can uh, see your slides. Yeah. Right, right. Because I, after a long gap, I'm using the Zoom. You know, we used to use the Zoom very often but now we don't use at all. Uh, so I said, you know, uh, that this is an emerging country of Bangladesh, India, Japan, triangular cooperation. Um, this is not trilateral, by the way. Triangular and trilateral, two different things. I'm not here to, uh, I'm not a diplomat. I work with, a, with a, a government organization in Delhi. Ottawa, you know, I'm going to talk, it's my purely my personal opinion. I have been collaborating with uh, Dr. Raihan team in Sanem and many others. So this is purely an, a pro bono uh, no, uh, contribution uh, for on the on the literature. So I'm trying to put it. What is the you know contour of in Bangladesh, India, Japan triangular cooperation? It's purely my personal view, and um, and it's a triangular. You know, uh, it is not a trilateral. Uh, trilateral means that I will be arguing more kind of in a diplomatic, you know, political um, uh, narrative or an, kind of an axis or kind of a construction, which is not I'm doing. What I'm trying to do here that the three countries, they have been interacting with each other. They know each other. They are the natural friends. And I find what are the convergences? What are the divergences? You know, uh, how do you stand then? What are the challenges? What three countries can do together? What three can do as one part of India in, 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 in this north part of India? Uh, I uh, would um, 
uh, I would be, you know, uh, many ways, the provocative in, in raising my questions. Let me first switch off my video to get it in a faster mode. Um, this is what uh, I see so many names are coming in front of me. Participant. Uh, let's move. Now, a triangular uh, cooperation, I, I said the best line, you know, the ground floor, ground floor. We're going to build many floors above. Look, uh, the three countries, the beauty is that, that they have a democracy, very strong, deep rooted. We have a rule of law, we have institution. Now, three countries, if the best line is very strong with the democracy, rule of law and institution, and if you go the BRICS, you know, the BRICS, which is going to strengthen the best line, the culture, the climate, and the connectivity, the commerce, all of them are very common, very deep rooted. You know, and Bangladesh, India, Japan are three pillars, the ancient civilization and the culture. And very strong relation, particularly between India and Japan. Uh, it starts with Rabindranath Tagore, P47, uh, Tagore's Okakura Tenshin's chemistry, um, Tagore visit to uh, um, uh, in, in Japan many times. Since it is in English, I'm telling Tagore, I'm not supposed to. I should call Rabindranath Thakur. So Rabindranath Thakur's visit to Bangladesh, uh, uh, to uh, Japan several times. And in the, during the Indian freedom struggle, uh, we, we know the history of the Rashbihari Bosch that Bangladesh and India can share. The P47, Subhash Chandra Bosch, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and during the trial, you know, the Radhavinath Pal's contribution by Japan, you know, uh, we know it very well. Post-47, if you look at uh, Bangladesh independence in 1971, both India and, and Japan contributed very strongly in, in strengthening Bangladesh Foundation. And uh, the first overseas visit I would, I would rather say second overseas visit of Bangabondu, what is in Japan, uh, next to in India. You know, in, I think in 1974, he, he made a trip and very successful mission, you know, uh, Bangabondu had uh, in Japan, where, you know, uh, he talked about the integration between India, uh, Japan, South Asia. He talked about Bangladesh, Japan relations, so on and so forth. So what I see, uh, you know, there are already bridges built by our top leaders. And unlike other countries, which are purely, you know, business oriented, you know, uh, purely business give and take, ours in India, Bangladesh and Japan are the part of civilization. So why they are so much natural, we understand them because democracy, rule of law, institution, and we see this is a rule based. Both Bangladesh is a great example, you know, the following the rules. It's an equal opportunity for everybody living in the country. So also in India and Japan. And these are documented and people follow it. Three countries, the respect institutions and the governance. We have plenty of institutions in the neighborhood, you know, the countries are not going to uh, an extended neighborhood, but we don't find the governance. An institution without governance means, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll not find a test. It doesn't work. So, but Bangladesh is a great example where the, you know, institutions are very much there, very strong, deep rooted. So also it's governance. And so also in India and in Japan, three countries are maritime nations. They have a shared global challenges in maritime security, ocean economy. And that is why the bridges are required. And that's, you know, uh, we, I, 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 I just touched upon it. There's a huge, strong subjects. Political scientists on it, or international relations experts will talk about more about it. And uh, what we see that this is a multipolar world. You know, many, many powers are being contesting, uh, you know, being contested in in multipolar Asia, and Indo-Pacific. But in India, Bangladesh, and Japan are, you know, the three countries. They are the founders you know, on Indo-Pacific, particularly India and Japan through Quad. And I see a strong role of Japan in Southeast and East Asia, uh, uh, be it in RCEP, be it in ASEAN, be it in uh, 
you know, uh, anything you, you name it, you know, you know, Japan is the first and last mover in that sense. And India and Bangladesh in South Asia and Bay of Bengal. So what I see, uh, they are uh, really converged partners, just like an aeroplane, a Bangladesh Biman. It has a two wings, Japan and India. And they are very close in terms of democracy, rule of law, institutions. So we know each other. We speak in the same language. And uh, we, we, uh, we, we, we talk to each other. We understand each other. And we, we had no, no you know, political or in any kind of a war among us. So, so this is the best line. And very quickly, I said, and I'd also request my uh, Sanem colleagues to uh, remind me, you know, at least 10 minutes before closing of my time. Otherwise, I will speak a lot. And I will not be having time much for Q&A. Sure, sir. Let's uh, come to... Sir, just uh, a little query. Uh, can you make the slideshow? Can you share uh, this? If I put a slideshow, the slide may not move, by the way. So you have to tell okay. me, you know, if slide doesn't move, you know. Uh, India, Japan are, are the most uh, favored, you know, uh, the trade partners. But look at the Bangladesh. What I have done, you know, because a trade is a kind of an, you know, uh, as a trade economist has a no, no country, but the trade is itself has a nationalist move, right? The Bangladesh would like to see its exports uh, for Bangladesh side. So what I did quickly and export and import, and if you see 71, because of that, uh, you know, Bangladesh liberation award, we, we didn't have the data in the IMF. Uh, so what we see, you know, if you come back to 2023, you know, Bangladesh, Meteoric rise in the trade in 2020 21 uh, in exports. It's an opportunity that COVID pandemic you know, provided to Bangladesh. But if you look at three countries together, I'm not going to argue that you know, India's market access in Bangladesh or India's market access in Japan. My point of argument here is that, that both India and Japan, since they have a very strong institution, they speak in several languages. Uh, they uh, they understand each other, you know. They provide they provide greater market access to Bangladesh in in terms of exports and Bangladesh in terms of imports from the sources country like India and Japan. So this is a kind of a symbiotic relations. You know? I don't want to go in deeper, you know, going with trade integration or you know other things. No need. My point of argument is, is here is that India and Japan, most favored trade partners for Bangladesh, and the data speaks it itself. Uh, but if you compare with other in the countries in the neighborhood, uh, you know, when the Bangladesh's top largest trade partners, the United States of America, but other countries in the neighborhood, I don't know, name it. You know, uh, it is very simple you know, that they don't give Bangladesh that market access to what India and Japan they are providing. And uh, when it has a Crisis. These three countries, you know, they uh, they are together. The together for uh, to when there's a global crisis to meet the challenges coming from. First of all, you know, I pick up this World Economic Forum Global Risk Factor Report, and uh, it may not be very clearly visible to you. you know, uh, and but all it all it you know it it all it tells you that kind of you know crisis and this cobweb which is done by the World Economic Forum. And I picked up some of them in a bigger size of the pie means the bigger risks and threats. So Russia, Ukraine war, post-pandemic challenges, food security, finance, uh, you know, uncertain global production and global trade. And there are many times choke points like in the Red Sea crisis or how these are, you know, um, creating lots of trouble, you know, for our vessels. Bangladesh is, they are, their vessels are also, they have faced the same challenges that Indians are facing. At the same time, you know, friends, please also remember the Suez Canal is get affected because of this. Panama Canal is also get affected. I had a slide where I decided at the last moment to remove. Bangladesh is highly export oriented. So their garments, uh, both from the eastward and the westward, they're getting affected because of this multiple maritime choke points. So also India and Japan. Panama canals is getting silted. And it is it's an artificial backwater and a lagoon type. And it has a gate. So those cannot handle, because of the water crisis, siltation, Panama canal cannot handle the bigger vessels. And it has all you know need to stand on queue. So 
so adding calls, trans transaction. Dr. Tay, we can't hear you. Uh, Dr. Probite, you have to unmute yourself. Can you see it now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see it now. So, uh, and three countries, uh, they have responded of the crisis together. And at the same time, they are, uh, you know, doing it indiv ind individually. Among the three, you know, India, uh, which is, uh, you know, the crisis, the threats, uh, all of them to the India is much bigger. India is aiming for a 4 trillion GDP. It's already crossed, by the way, 4 trillion and going to cross 10 trillion. So any kind of a crisis like, you know, is poly crisis type of things, you know, uh, it affect our competitiveness. So also, you know, Bangladesh. So the three countries, um, you know, they are facing similar challenges. When the enemies of the three are common, we will be, you know, speaking each other much, much more, more you know. When there are common enemies like this, we will be holding our hands holding, shaking our hands and staying together. You know, that's what they're doing. Uh, can you see my slides? Yeah. Now, there are advantages, you know, if you are, you know, if you are following rule-based order, uh, advantage, because Bangladesh, India, Japan are also founder of the global multilateral programs, institutions. Uh, three of them, you know, are having an advantage in maritime front, practice rule of law, they have a technology Japan, they have a market like India, resources like three countries, a strong private sector. Some countries in the neighborhood, even they do not have even private sector. They are the job worker. They are making the goods for some other brands, you know. Uh, but here we have a strong identity you know, in, in many dimensions. At the same time, three countries are the global rule makers because we are the founder members of the multilateral process, WTO. India, Japan successfully organized G20. Uh, and uh, I need to see my watch as well. Otherwise, I'll... <clears throat> and uh, major outcomes of the G20 summit, we see uh, the trade, digital technology, financial cooperation, climate change issues. India, Bangladesh, Japan, they have been playing strong role in WIPO. WHO, uh, India, Bangladesh are South-South partners on the big side, you know, uh, several other South-South cooperation. Uh, and, uh, and India is a partner of the BRICS IBSA. Uh, India also the founder member of where Bangladesh and Japan are also the member countries like International Solar Alliance, you know, uh, the Biofuel Alliance, uh, IMEC, CDRI. Uh, India, Bangladesh are founder member of the SARC being second. So what I see, you know, they are, um, you know, uh, very, you know, they, they strongly you know, present, they're strongly present in the multilateral form, the regional form, and also, you know, several cross-regional. And these are, so when uh, three countries, uh, their institutions are so strong, their private sector has strong resources, going into multilateral makes sense because these are, are going to be guiding principles globally as well as for the country itself. And I see, you know, uh, there are, you know, scaling up opportunities for it, particularly because India, Japan, and Bangladesh have many commonalities in terms of trade and investment. For example, in the triangular, you know, that India, Japan, and SEPA already implemented in 2011, Bangladesh, Japan, SEPA joint study group report completed. They are going for a negotiation soon and I don't expect 2025 you know they will be you know likely to complete Bangladesh India joint study completed they're going for a negotiation hopefully after Indian election so I think by 2026 when Bangladesh gets navigating you know gets officially get into uh, a developing world for 1st January uh, I think 
this is this triangular is going to give a lot of support to Bangladesh, you know, running in as, as a member of the developing countries. You know. And uh, see the, the uh, you know, the, the complementarities you know, they have. ASEAN, India, Japan partnerships. They're also a member of IPEF, which is part of an economic wing of the Indo-Pacific. They have a multilateral guiding uh, role that Indo-Pacific is playing or will be playing, where Bangladesh is joining, not in the IPEF, but also you know, in the Indo-Pacific other areas. So there are complementarities in the trade. RCEP, India is not there, Japan is there. Bangladesh is interested to join. Uh, CPTPP, no India, Bangladesh, Quad, no Bangladesh, IORA, uh, means Indian Ocean Rim Association, where no Japan. So global and very powerful regional bodies there, I think, you know, I, I think the scope for complementarity. So three of them sometime talk about uh, the triangular cooperation, but triangular cooperation can also guide Bangladesh, for example, you know, discussing about trade issues like RCEP or Japan, you know, interesting, interested in the IORA uh, or maybe India is going into, you know, RCEP or CGBTPP or whatever, you know, like that. And the rise of Bangladesh is very important uh, for Asia, the rise of Asia because 1 trillion 2031, that is the Bangladesh GDP and uh, you know, India 32 trillion 47 and to sustain the good Bangladesh, need to invest in infrastructure. I have some slides to go on that, you know, you know going much about the infrastructure and infrastructure in this connectivity and stronger port and maritime linkages. Those would be the key for Bangladesh's rise without a faster port, deeper port of Bangladesh, ambition to a strong you know, economy in the developing world may not be able to so smooth in and uh, and northeast part. If rise of Bangladesh means rise of northeast as well, northeast of India. So, so there you can see, you know, a cycle uh, which are for Bangladesh. It starts and it spreads into India, and uh, and it starts again from India. It goes into Bangladesh. The Japan comes as a very very trusted friend. You know, this this area. And that is why Prime Minister Kishida, you know, you know, he is in the FWEP, free and open in the Pacific, uh, the concept that he has launched. And he wants to strengthen the you know, Bay of Bengal initiatives, which they call the Big B. Uh, and uh, it's connecting with Bangladesh with the India's Northeast, and then the industrial value chain with the mainland uh, in Japan, where the companies uh, will be investing, centering around Northeast India, West Bengal, Eastern part of India, Orissa, um, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, rest of India, and, and Bangladesh as well. And it makes sense, and lots of things are happening. So I will be spending a little bit about what are those lots of things? What are the hope? Is it purely in the, in the media, or it's really happening? So, so um, rise of Bangladesh uh, is actually in sync with uh, in Japan's in the Pacific Oceans Initiative. Here I also add that India is also having its Indo-Pacific vision, like Bangladesh it has. Uh, Bangladesh introduced its vision for Indo-Pacific just before its election. India's vision for Indo-Pacific, in short, we call them uh, you know, in Indian Oceans, Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative, IPOI, Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative. Like FOIP, India has its IPOI vision. Today, you know, India and other Indo-Pacific member countries, they have been discussing about convergence of the Indo-Pacific visions through projects, through several other, you know, programs. Let me come back to then Japan, what they're doing in India. Japan is traditionally, you know, as an infrastructure builder. I, I, I you know, I, 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 I've been traveling Japan. I lived there. Many of my friends who have joined here today, uh, they know the Japan more than me. You know, like I have a friend, Mizanur Rehman, whom I met in 15 years back in Tokyo. You know, today Mizan, Mizan Bhai is you know, heading Bangladesh Stock Exchange. You know. He is you know, one of the great macroeconomists. So, <clears throat> and uh, he did his 
lots of interaction with Japan and Bangladesh, and I, I know some of them. So si similarly, you know, Japan's contribution is in India. You know, it's more into the infrastructure. Uh, five projects need a special mention. And uh, you know, uh, one is that Delhi Mumbai Industrial Corridor. I live in Delhi, and I can see this. This has been implemented. And, and fabulous infrastructure development happened in the last you know, 10, 10, 15 years, even more. Uh, Delhi, Mumbai, uh, you know, Austin dedicated freight corridor, Mumbai, Ahmedabad, high speed, Mumbai trans server link, which is just recently launched, Kolkata Metro and many other infrastructure, connectivity progress and, and then in the entire country. And I'm, I cannot you know, go line by line. So Japanese contribution and in Indian infrastructure, which is an, in foundation of Indian economy, the modern Indian economy, is heavily documented and not you know, we know about. What about uh, you know the investments? Japan, India is a bilateral trade partner. SEPA we have trade is, is you know it's not picking up, but you know trade is between Japan and India. Even though we have a SEPA, the complementarities in that sense is not that large. You know, the Jap unlike a Japan and ASEAN, but trade is picking up, and I see that investments from the Japan is also rising today. There are you know more than three thousand Japanese companies. You know here we have a Japanese cities. If you go from Delhi to Jaipur, we have you know uh, almost about uh, Japanese FDI coming from Japan is uh, almost touching about uh, two billion dollar. Uh, and Japan the companies here, you know, in Delhi, uh, mostly clustered in the processed food, automobiles, uh, technology project programs, and equally big in numbers in Tamil Nadu, uh, and as well as in the Pune, and you know, and, and also largely coming up in the southern part of India. Similarly, Japan FDI in Bangladesh has also increased, in, you know, it's quite a big amount, uh, and more than thirty plus. 300 plus companies are there in the Bangladesh. Uh, the one I would like to mention here, and I have borrowed these slides from one of my friends, a Japanese friend, is that this is the one Bangladesh need to follow. You know what's happening between India and Japan in semiconductor. You know this is the futuristic project in India and Japan semiconductor policy dialogue was held in November last year. A big number of people from Japan and several Indian companies. Today, you know, the Japan and the part within the Tata, they are investing in the semiconductor in, in, in the northeast part of India, in Assam. So, so, you know, the semiconductor is something which is essential part of it. it, is, it we call it in a very, in a media language called CHIP, C-H-I-P. You know, everywhere it is required. So, so in a modern uh, tech-oriented uh, production required, and semiconductor directly uh, into the manufacturing process. So India, Japan uh, are, have started their dialogue. I think some more uh, programs and projects will be unfolded. But look at who are participating in this interaction. All the big guys, you know, LNT, Tata, Jindal, Knox, Air Product, et cetera, et cetera. And from the Japanese sides are also the big names, Rasona, the, that association, like Jetro, Jebik, Sanmiti. So, so I think we need to follow this very closely. And this is uh, one of the latest outcome of very strong, deep-rooted India-Japan partnerships, you know, which uh, we, it is personally followed by our prime ministers. Let's see what is there in Bangladesh. You know. uh, look at it, you know, um, that Bangladesh, uh, Japan is one of the you know, trusted partners um, and uh, development partners, pretty long time. From 71 onward, it has assembly plant, the Honda motorcycle, Sumitamo setting up CZs, a town, Japan city in Arai Hazar near to Dhaka. Uh, Japanese uh, ODA is rising as well in different projects. Um, and uh, there are equally, you know, uh, Indian CZs, Indian uh, ODA, uh, plus 10 billion implemented in Bangladesh. I may be, you know, some of the numbers which I'm telling just to you know, show my solidarity, you know, maybe 10 billion, maybe less than 10 billion, more than 10 billion. So you take that in spirit, you know, 
I put a disclaimer in the, there. And uh, there are several projects in the uh, you know, um, ODA or development, cooperation development assistance are being implemented. Agartala Khaura thermal power plants uh, and Kulna Molna railway line, oil pipeline, etc., etc. See, and when they are, you know, this has also created a domino kind of an effect, like India and Japan. So Koreans have also, you know, joined. And it is very natural movement. So what I see, you just started with an India and in Japan, other development partners, they are also following it. Why? Uh, because the Korean, Japanese, they find that Bangladesh and India, they are civilization partners. They are the Asian civilization partners. That's what, you know, they feel there is a cultural similarities, cultural language similarities. Let me see, this, can this kind of an aspiration, and the one I am taking, presenting, uh, can Bangladesh uh, um, you know, take it up? Uh, um, to me, yes, and I will argue in a couple of slides very quickly, because it's a Bengal tiger, you know, uh, I, I said the Bengal tiger roar, I have a number one slide in terms of income per capita, uh, the Bangladesh uh, income per capita and current dollar is more than uh, India even. Uh, and all four facets of their development, like you know, exports of goods and services, um, you know, in terms of uh, trade openness, in terms of you know, uh, liberalization, trade liberalizations, everywhere Bangladesh has done phenomenally well. You know, so the data speaks that only. My point is that if the country has had nothing, you know, hundred, you know, uh, million, you know, that's what that global exports or, you know, um, it had hundred, you know, dollar per, per, per capita income once a time. From there, it has a more than three thousand dollar per capita income. So, so with that, they are doing good quality of reforms, and these are the outcomes. And <clears throat> and I see. You know, FDI, which is a very difficult to make a judgment. In India, Bangladesh, FDI flow, there are restrictions. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, uh, I think, uh, you know, there are uh, opportunities in uh, India and Bangladesh and FDI front. Once it is open up, I think FDI flow will grow up, certainly. But today, you know, uh, Bangladesh per capita FDI flow is $9. And whereas in India, it is about 35 I think. Bangladesh will be catch up if India Bangladesh FDI front is opened up. You know, present it is restricted, by the way. Bangladesh total FDI flow is also hasn't picked up compared to the trade. That is the reason is that they do not have in SEPA FDA, or they need to strengthen their you know partnerships. Here comes you know the role of India, and as I said, that FDI flow will go up, you know, heavily, provided you know we see this we strengthen the triangular relations plus. Uh, India Bangladesh FDI relations. Uh, again, my slides are not moving. Let's see the future. Uh, Bangladesh future, uh, you know, and Indian future, if you put them in comparison and a very close um, economical Vietnam, you know, if you look at the blue one, is basically Bangladesh GDP, and I picked it for price or trust coupons. You don't have to believe in these numbers uh, or its methodology. But the feeling is that uh, this is by 2050, Bangladesh economic size were 2.3 trillion. And uh, if you look at in comparison, you know, uh, much before Bangladesh and Vietnam, you know, uh, they will remain in you know, a very close competitor and, uh, and they in, and that in their front, uh, the aspiration will be in India. So, I've been telling that strengthen the relation within India makes a sense, you know, because 2050 or even 2045 or 2040, it will not that far away. So, and so this is the economic future size means big numbers, means the big opportunities and the prosperity as well. Bangladesh is one of the ready made garment exporters, and uh, there are, uh, you know, uh, many, uh, you know, this is the area, you know, on the ready-made garment. You know, I see lots of opportunities for India as well as for the Japan. And there is a case where I see the triangular cooperation is actually uh, helping Bangladesh exports of ready-made garment, both in 
both in India as well as in the Japan, which I'll come later. Now, what I see that uh, there are um, several other you know, uh, areas where both of them, then they are committed um, political in terms of political stability, in terms of going into, you know, uh, going forward in terms of growth, in terms of their, you know, um, their Bangla advantages like Bangladesh in the garment pharmaceuticals, which fully reciprocated by, you know, other countries in the through, if they have a strong complementarities. And Bangladesh is also committed to in the net zero and other, you know, climate related agenda, UN program. Uh, Bangladesh is leading BIMSTEC BBIN in the SEPA within India and Japan and in discussion. So I'm hopeful that 2031, if you have a political leadership strong under, you know, the uh, Prime Minister uh, Sheikh Hasina, that one trillion economy by 2031, just a few years from now, this is achievable. And, and, and I, I'm hopeful. Let me come to India, Bangladesh quickly. Uh, because I have discussed about the back baseline, then background, quick, what's Bangladesh as I look at it, and then a little bit about Bangladesh and India, what they are doing, and then we'll bring the Japan here. <clears throat> I have slightly discussed about Japan, India as well. Bangladesh and India trade relation is in very good shape, and we see the GBC production networks, this is getting unfolded between India and Bangladesh. There are opportunities in the more in the trade and post covid bangladesh export to india has actually exceeded 1 billion most likely they are going to touch 2 billion bangladesh export to india there are many trade barriers at the border and the beyond i'm not going to discuss in all the trade barriers today it is not not, the, not it doesn't fit into to this conversation and uh, bangladesh is going to be a developing country 2026 where India is coming, you know, as a as a strong both Japan and India as a strong trade partners to support Bangladesh's rise and Bangladesh's journey as a developing country. This slide is very important, and particularly to the young scholars, you know, what I am trying to tell you that India Bangladesh trade relations is actually given, you know, uh, compared to the China, you know, Bangladesh to get you know, reveal comparative advantage means comparative trade trade advantage more than what China offered to Bangladesh. You know. So that is, the, that is the point, you know, uh, one need to keep in mind that if you have a democracy, rule of law, institution, political relation, good, civilization partner, you know, uh, you will see, you know, tr long-term trade that what Bangladesh has achieved. By doing the trade with India, Bangladesh has has gained more in the trade from the market access. 446, that is why Bangladesh revealed comparative advantage through the SAFTA and through the bilateral. That's what I'm doing. Let me see also quickly on uh, the value chain you know, and that's happening. And as we know that this is the, in the production number, the trade in, in the value chain in the garments. And, uh, and what about uh, the connectivity and infrastructure programs? FinTech, Airways, international corridors, uh, all of them are between India and Bangladesh are several of them. You know. I, I'm not going to discuss in, going in detail. It will take time. Uh, just uh, the schematic presentations, in India's between Asuganj and Agartala, Mongla, Khulna, uh, between Dhaka, Chotogram, and from Chotogram to Cox's Bazar, several projects, Bangladesh, with several, you know, global trade, global partners, they're setting up, particularly in, in India, uh, projects like, um, you know, IWT corridors with Asuganj to Agartala or Mongla to Kulna and many other places, you know, I'm not going to, you know, give them in, in, in particular. <clears throat> I visited uh, Matarabadi port. And if you look at, you know, some of, some of the things which I have attracted a lot in my mind, you know, that, SEZs in Mid Sarai, which is uh, Indian economic zones in Mid Sarai, mm -hmm. and Mongla, uh, and particularly the projects like Agartala Akhaura railway line, Asuganj Akhaura, and Asuganj IW terminal. So these are the projects already implemented. And 
Bir Sarai Special Economic Zone, I was speaking to an Exim Bank of India. They have co-finance and steel plant. So what I see, you know, uh, that in the infrastructure fund, lots of development, right? And you won't disagree with me. You know, I don't live in Bangladesh. I look at Bangladesh uh, from outside, read the literature. But projects like in SEZs, like Mir Sarai or Amongla, you know, these are the futuristics. Uh, let me come to the nearest zone of Mir Sarai or Cox's Bazaar or, or Chattogram is India's subroom, right? Which is the last point uh, where the ICP, the Prime Minister, Indian Prime Minister inaugurated very recently. So up to the subroom, uh, we see, you know, uh, several projects, you know, already extended railway line, bridge on the river Feni, and um, many of the, you know, container yard, ICP. So I would request the scholars from Bangladesh, India, and Japan to visit in the subroom and see your bikes yourself. Subroom to distance is Chattogram 78, and Matarbari is about 110 kilometer. So this corridor is going to be a new gateway for the India's Northeast, as well as the gateway for Bangladesh all the way to Southeast Asia. This is the you know, subroom railway station, et cetera, et cetera. Let's come to uh, uh, the, uh, you know, some constructive uh, part of my presentations. What I'm going to argue here, the role of Bangladesh, Japan, and India in the Northeast. Look, uh, the recent study by the Asian Conference, you know, it, it talked about the likely you know, GDP scenario 2041. And the combined GDP of India, Bangladesh is going to be 20, almost 30 trillion by 2041. 2041 is about a 15 years just away. You know. uh, and uh, combined GDP of India and Northeast India, Bangladesh, 3.1. Presently, it is a couple of billion dollars. What's the Bengal's economy size? The state of West Bengal economy size would be likely to be from 270 billion to 2.8 trillion dollar in uh, in a current price in 2041. So what I see, you know, this this Northeast Bangladesh, India, are specifically BBIN and Beamstack is going to be the most happening place. You want you won't get any other sub-region in the world. China is dying, you know, China is slowing down. Uh, that this kind of a future scenario. So I would, you know, this is where, you know, we, we are talking about the relation triangular. And if you go to the city-wise, 2021-41, uh, the Chotogram, Dhaka, Kolkata, Agartala, and all these places is going to make the bigger, larger GDP. So they are going to be more higher consuming point or a producing point, both goods and services areas, you know. So I think so this is, uh, yeah, these are, you know, uh, uh, the, uh, the nodes uh, in, in the Northeast Bangladesh and the rest of India's context, which are going to drive you know, from the region. So if economy is going to be, you know, kind of, and by 2041, such 30 uh, trillion plus. So if, uh, and the countries, if they undertake uh, and the connectivity program, uh, certainly, you know, move the will. Will for what? Will for getting more income, more employment, more growth. And this is, there are many studies, you know, I have oversimplified it. This arrow is one way, you know, uh, maybe it's a both way causality runs in the both way, but trust me, there are many studies that it says that if you put it in an infrastructure, it would induce a connectivity and the connectivity would help rising the growth. And here, you know, some of them are putting into the connectivity, I mean the cross-border and also the national like Matarbari DSP, India Bangladesh IWT program, subroom ICP, Dhubri Fulbari corridor, subroom Chotogram, Matarbari corridor, trilateral highway, Kaladan projects, Kokra, Jar, Gelefu, Railway line, Banner Hat, Samsi Railway Line Project, Guwahati Airport Expansion, Padma Bridge, Agartala, Dhaka, Kolkata Railway Line, Guwahati, Kelefu Road and Rail Linkages. There are many. These are certainly going to you know, reduce the transportation cost, trade cost, and a country like Bangladesh and some part of India 
which are you know uh, growing much faster than rest of india like northeastern part of india they are they will be doing you know gaining more competitiveness more productivity you know uh, and more employment rise in the employment and so on and so forth so this is what i see you know in the future and <clears throat> is that uh, the one which is purely in the bbin it's uh, certainly not it is also having an regional implications like in the sri lanka or in the nepal bhutan uh, and other countries in in the region so what i see that uh, that given you know in in view of such promising future uh, japan and india uh, that's having a very natural interest you know through trade through corridors through infrastructure and um, you know and uh, the, the marginal propensity of the growth or marginal propensity for development or a trade from any you know from the region is very high that's what you know i, I would like to say and uh, many of those by the way are also on, on unilateral basis because bangladesh india and japan are a member of wto trade facilitation agreement bangladesh is doing a single single uh, window custom national single window with support of um, you know maybe uh, from the world bank or ungtad uh, india has already implemented customs we are improving border infrastructure we are doing a local trade in local currency uh, we are using more digital technology in trade facilitations more air linkages iwt port shipping because they are these are directly part of our commitments three countries particularly bangladesh and india's commitment in wto trade facilitation agreement which is a binding commitment so and most of the things are done by unilateral you can visit national board of revenue in bangladesh for a greater details about what bangladesh is doing in trade facilitation front now come to the projects which are being implemented you know the one i have discussed and i have put them you know like this on the border connectivity and if you have some questions you know uh, we can ask in the q and a session on the border connectivity like the projects which i've discussed um, you know on the railway kokrajhar gelefu railway means that gelefu where mindfulness city uh, the bhutan is on 1000 square kilometer area mindfulness special administration development you know especially economic zone and administration you know city kind of they are developing so so Kok- from gelefu to kokrajhar is in assam they are putting it in a railway line this is going to help chotogram port by the way so see a project between india and bhutan is helping bangladesh you know sometimes bangladesh my friends are very nationalistic they said amra shob di dichi bangladesh india ke chotogram port di dichi matar bari di dichi eta di dichi ota di dichi shob di dilam amra ki pailam but kokrajhar gelefu railway line which is in a project in 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 uh, in not in bangladesh they are going to add uh, you know the cargo for the chotogram uh, uh, so there are these are the projects which are having regional implications you know, either in a small quantity or a bigger quantity like in highway uh, asuganj um, agartala highway i mean you, you, i have seen it in the construction it's coming a very super fast and highway it's not yet completed but once it is done you know, the bangladesh exports through agartala and then going to india and then southeast asia manipur and this will be faster so so many so many things you know projects are being implemented i no need to mention and one certainly point number 3 sorry sir to interrupt you uh, if you could uh, wrap up with the next 10 minutes okay yeah uh, yes uh, there are only you know five six slides more so what i see you know a kind of thing like aviation look uh, in delhi airport you know uh, most of the users of the delhi airport are bangladesh rmg exporters so uh, bangladesh rmg exporters sending their garments to delhi and international air cargo operators they are those exports are being lifted india doesn't free transit to bangladesh so this is a kind of you know relation that we have seen and this is um, you know japanese 
and Jaika, you know, I, I think they are also, you know, trying, uh, studying this scenario that can, uh, you know, Narita or Haneda or somewhere, you know, in, in Japan, they can also provide Bangladesh exports of governments, particularly which is directed uh, to, you know, um, uh, um, you know, American West Coast kind of thing. So there are projects which are uh, not India, Bangladesh, in the region, but they have, you know, some regional implications. And I have put them, you know, uh, in a map like this, the Tata Group semiconductor projects, which is coming up in Assam and Galefo Mindfulness City in the Bhutan, the Dhubri Fulbari Corridor. Dhubri Fulbari Corridor, once it is done, this 32 kilometer, Bhutan exports directly to Bangladesh, you know, or Bangladesh Bhutan preferential trade agreement, Bangladesh should be able to utilize it properly. And so many projects in which are under implementations. Who played a major role? No doubt it's the Japanese. You know, and as well as an Indian central, central agencies, you know, they have done very strongly in, in like our border infrastructure, you know, phenomenal progress done by, you know, the, you know whatever we have seen in the Land Ports Authority, and as well as several other central agencies like NHAI, NHIDCL, and as well as the JICA in terms of corridor. Today, you know, Gohati, uh, which is, you know, Assam is thinking, that they're going to play, you know, would like to play in these unfolding, you know, relations. So, 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 so they had a very high-level conference, and what they are, you know, trying to tell that Assam would also like to be get integrated, you know, in these sub-regional programs, and uh, many places, you know, which Assam is doing either in warehouses or assembly center or kind of, you know, development projects, both in railway and road they would like to get it connected so that Bhutan, which is sharing border with Assam, and then going to Meghalaya and adjacent state, and then going to Bangladesh and Chattogram, in, you know, in a sense. <clears throat> and uh, some of the projects also need required, which is very futuristic, very quality oriented, like oil pipeline. You know. Sometimes when road may kind of create a pollution or multiply, but if you convert the pollution into, you know, in a very healthy life, lifestyle, like the oil pipeline, both in Nepal and India, Bangladesh, exchange of electricity, you know, uh, renewable energy interactions. On the maritime front, you know, India and Bangladesh uh, signed a coastal shipping agreement, SCMP. We have been telling, we have been arguing that let this SCMP is excellent gesture by Bangladesh government to India's Northeast, but they should also allow, Bangladesh uh, should also allow India's Northeast for third country trade which is presently not permissible through SCMP. <clears throat> and this is also an opportunity for Bangladesh, you know, going into Southeast, which I, I've said, you know, like the one, in the, if you start from Matarbani Cox's Bazaar, presently you cannot go to Southeast Asia. You have to come to India and then, you know, going to uh, this with the trilateral highway. So here India has already offered Bangladesh, please come and join. I keep this uh, slide, this is a little bit, you know, because of time constant. All I'm arguing that there, this is not the new thing, you know, that I have been arguing or putting up to you. There's a very strong political support, the G20, you know, um, summit where Bangladesh joined Prime Minister uh, as an invitee, it is our guest, but Japan and India as a founder, you know, a part of the G20. G20 leaders, the trade development minister declaration, they have said it exactly that you build your infrastructure, you raise your competitiveness, private sectors, you know, get an opportunity more. So whatever Japan, India and Bangladesh, the triangular is actually it's support of, you know, getting a lead from the G20 declarations. There are barriers, uh, both of them and NTMs at the border, but those need to be, you know, uh, sorted out. I don't want to go and give an special examples, like the testing laboratories. If we have a more collaborations with the use of digital certification of standard compliance procedures, there are experts to tell you that, but I think this is in futuristic projects. Well, opportunities here. <clears throat> Let me conclude, you know, by uh, this map. Uh, see, if you see the Bay of Bengal here, you know, the deep blue is that, which is, you know, uh, deep draft, depth is very high. Khub Gobir and the shallow part is which, which you go to the shed, you know, uh, near to 
uh, to the sore or cost to them. So what do you see that international corridor or a shipping corridor going from Singapore and then it goes to Colombo. So India going to feed, you know, still feeding those the feeder ports, right? Our ports are feeder until Matarbari, which comes in, you know, two years or three years from now. And feeding a port like Colombo, Singapore has a costly affairs. So India is setting up an international transshipment harbor at a place called Galatia, Nicobar, very close to this, you know, shipping corridor. Once it is done, you know, I think the Bangladesh, Japan, and India trade relation, investment relation, yeah, maritime connectivity will be much stronger and very, very few, 100 years story, you know, uh, that is going, this port is going to feed. So Galatia is going to be a larger hub and they will feed into the ports in Bangladesh. But, you know, 20, 25 years, all the ports in West Bengal will be, will be silted. Only the port, you know, I have written it extensively, the Matabari, uh, which will be, you know, running, or Chayafu uh, will be running, you know, with a high trap. Uh, and I, I suggest that in such, you know, um, development where India, Japan, and, and Bangladesh are collaborating, studies are required, you know, and Sanem, um, RIS, many other organizations may collaborate and do, you know, corridor monitoring, how much time it's taking at the border. No such study has been done so far. So I'm, I'm telling this, you know, the cost, distance, and TCD model, time, cost, and distance. If you start from Guwahati, the cargo may lead to in the Matarbari or a Chortogram, and but a lot, lot of waiting at the border. So we need to assess those. We are forward. The last, you know, if, if you um, uh, don't give an way forward, sometimes, you know, the diplomats don't get, or those are the policymakers, strategists, they feel... Uh, well, shop kichu thaklo kichu nahi about it. So three wheels in this case, climate, culture, and connectivity. I think we need to have a track to dialogue, regular basis, think tank network, network of industry associations, chambers of commerce like Bangladesh, uh, northeast part of India, and Japan think tank networks, industry associations between Japan, India, uh, and uh, Bangladesh, you know, uh, more P P2P, extend the scholars, cultural programs, means Bangladesh scholars, they go very often uh, to Japan, so also Indian, but make a condition uh, that one Indian should spend at least one month in Bangladesh and next two months in Japan. Similarly, one Bangladesh spend one month in India and next one month in, in Tokyo. If JICA or JETRO or you know, uh, Japan Foundation or Indian ICCR, they provide a kind of scholarships or fellowship exchange program like that. Lots of things we have a similarities, you know, exchange of foods, cuisines, one of those cultural areas, are plenty of things you can do. And uh, I suggest that digital economy, trade facilitation, border management, renewable green energy, economic corridor, those are the Japan's interests, Bangladesh interests, and our India's interest. So there's a, there's a, these are the areas where we have a clear convergence and we can do plenty of things, both at G2G as well as B2B. And uh, perhaps the last conclusion, you know, concluding remarks is a little bit, uh, you know, out of the you know, turn, but I, let me, allow me, please allow me to put it in recommendation. And I recommend that, you know, foreign ministers of Japan, India, and Bangladesh, they can have a you know regular trilateral meeting. You know, I I use the word trilateral, not a triangular. Uh, the sideline of BIMSEG, ASEAN Plus Summit, or UN Assembly, General Assembly. And you know, once there's, there's a political support, things these wheels will move. And I think whatever I said or whatever you are thinking, that will get you know kind of a recognition. Thank you very much. And I have some you know publications and on that something I have written um, on that. You can refer to that. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, now the floor is open for questions. Can you write your questions in the chat box or raise your hand? Um, sir, I have already uh, some questions in the chat box. I'm uh, reading it out. Afia Mubashira Tiyasha asks, uh, are there opportunities for joint venture 
or knowledge sharing initiatives in specific sectors like pharmaceuticals, IT, or renewable energy to boost regional trade in these areas. Hello, sir. Beg your pardon? Uh, uh, Afia Murashira Yasha asked uh, a question. Um, would you like to take all the questions first and then answer? Or hey, can you uh, can you read it out because I can't see it because I'm. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm reading uh, it out. Can you help me? Yeah, the yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Afia Murashira Yasha asked, "Are there opportunities or joint ventures or knowledge sharing initiatives in a specific sectors like?" Pharmaceuticals, IT, or renewable energy to boost regional trade in these areas. Yes, see, uh, I am an economist. You know, I'm not an engineer or um, or and, and technical experts. And neither I'm a neither I'm not a you know, I'm a practitioner. So this question is very important. I won't be able to make you happy with a very detailed answer. All I can say that in the pharmaceuticals. Uh, pharmace uh, in pharmaceuticals, drugs and pharmaceuticals is an area where India, Japan, India, Bangladesh, you know, they have been collaborating for a pretty long time. And, uh, and I think the three of them, you know, they will certainly have a triangular kind of an, an relation in the pharmaceutical sectors. Uh, but of course, uh, you know, here uh, we need to see more detail, you know, we need to understand the more detail. I do not know, you know, a further uh, you know, answer to you know, what kind of you know, things. Yes, please, next questions. Zahin Firdos Maisha asks. Of course, there's IT and renewable energy. Certainly, you know, this IT sector uh, and the renewable energy, you might be knowing uh, that, uh, Afia, that you might be know, knowing that many of the Indi in Bangladesh, uh, you know, the graduates, the IT uh, la beginners, they have been visiting uh, Japan, working with Japanese IT companies. Why? You know, I, I checked, you know, I checked with uh, one of the uh, Japanese IT companies. They said they borrow, um, they bring the Bangladeshi, uh, you know, um, graduates uh, to uh, Bangladesh to work in the IT companies after they give, you know, language training. And uh, because I said, why language training that you can also give to a person coming from Sri Lanka or India, but they find that one Bangladeshi worker is more decent, more honest, more hardworking. They follow, you know, um, uh, 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 you know uh, the rules, regulation, you know, the hierarchy, you know, that's what they said. Other countries, my Japanese friends say that uh, they don't, you know, they, they fall behind than Bangladesh. So this is where, you know, I think IT sector uh, in particular, you know, uh, that Bangladesh has a special interest uh, opportunity in, in Japan. Renewable energy as well. See, Bangladesh and India are partner in the Biofuel Alliance which was launched at the sideline of the G20 summit in Delhi, Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina in and Prime Minister Narendra Modi and many others, they were all part of it. Uh, and renewable energy, Bangladesh and Japan, both are members of International Solar Alliance. They had lots of opportunities, you know, on, on the renewable sec energy sector. Uh, well, uh, I mean, I, I, would, uh, I would like to stop it here because my knowledge is also very limited. I see there is a you know, good progress that India has allowed, India has agreed to transmit a renewable energy hydropower from Bhutan to Bangladesh or from Nepal to Bangladesh. If those are going to happen, and certainly, you know, the, these are going to be great examples of the renewable energy trade. Next question, please. So the next question is, Ipshita uh, Kajuri uh, asked, is it possible for this uh, triangular cooperation to result in knowledge sharing initiatives which could promote export diversification in Bangladesh. Yes, indeed, you know. Uh, again, you know, I, I would have to just um, you know, add it, my view, which may be a theoretical. Uh, it may not have a theoretical support, but I can see if the export diversification for Bangladesh should be a big challenge after 
you know, once Bangladesh gets elevated to developing world, because slowly, slowly, your quota will disappear. So you have to stand on your own foot, on feet. So in that sense, diversification beyond RMG is very important. Here comes this tri triangular relation. The triangular relation means that if we have in SEPA, that Bangladesh, Japan, and Bangladesh, India, if those are done, then three countries, they, they are going to have a you know, kind of a free trade area moving there. Bangladesh, this will help Bangladesh exports, uh, many processed foods, pharmaceuticals, uh, and um, horticulture, and many other areas, you know, uh, from away from the, plus the new, new projects, you know, which is not there at the moment. The companies like Pran, Beximco, uh, many others are companies like in the Japanese companies or Indian companies, they're waiting the SEPA to be negotiated and implemented. They will jump <laughs> on the business, you know, for the business opportunities in Bangladesh. So new products might emerge. With existing products, that's I said, the pharmaceutical, processed food, horticulture, um, but uh, uh, and uh, for the new products, there will be many more, you know, in that sense. So this is very much possible. You know. Thank you. So any other questions? Um, so Ashiku Rahman, uh, professor, uh, assistant professor, Department of International Relations, uh, Russia University, asks. Uh, uh, he has two questions. Um, um, if I am not wrong, the examples that you gave in your uh, presentation are bilateral in nature. Is there any particular instance where Bangladesh, Japan, India, triangular cooperation take place? If not, why it is academically significant to discuss these relationships uh, if there is no empirical evidence? It is his uh, first question and the next question. If these uh, states aim uh, to foster this triangular cooperation, what are the shared objectives that these three countries aim to achieve via this endeavor? Yeah, I, I see. I let me respond to the second one first. Uh, in my slide, I said the shared objectives is that there are many shared challenges they have been facing in the maritime front. There are many shared challenges they are facing in the post pandemic. And the war between uh, Russia, Ukraine, in the energy sector, food sector, oil crisis. So, so, so these are the global challenges, you know. Plus, they also have some bilaterals. I have not highlighted the bilaterals. So, three countries they have many common challenges, many common enemies. So they will be, you know, that is why you know uh, there is a sense for having a stronger triangular uh, cooperation to manage. First, that those are which are happening globally. Second, there's global you know, impacts on each and individually if they can you know, have a stronger relation. So, so these are the, you know, their shared agenda. Uh, by the way, the, there is no formal official uh, discussion happening, by the way, among the three. All about it is maybe happening. I am not aware of it. What I am aware of, the, those are the issue-based, project-based triangular cooperation that's going on. Second question is maybe this issue-based triangular cooperation can you know, expand into you know, track one level or one and a half level, who knows? Uh, the first question is that, well, it is an academic uh, and always better to have an academic interactions to have you, you know, eminent scholar coming as a, you know, a participant and enriching our conversation. So thank you, uh, Professor uh, Rahman, for joining. Any other questions? So the next question. Khandakar, if I ask, Bangladesh is graduating from least de developed countries, uh, status very soon. How can this triangular cooperation support a smooth transition for Bangladesh, the Bangladeshi business in the context of trade benefits they currently enjoy? Well, um, I replied, you know, uh, because Bangladesh needs stronger infrastructure, you know, uh, and that stronger infrastructure has to be very good. Uh, you know, it support your Bangladesh supply chain, resilient supply chain. So, in that sense, you know, whatever uh, is happening at the moment, 
uh, in Bangladesh, like development of Matarbari, several corridors, several SEZs, several highway, expressway, railway line, bridges, all absolutely essential. Now, if you think that Bangladesh cannot sustain alone all, uh, all, all those infrastructure, because this infrastructure is having, you know, a kind of a regional public goods, like a port, the kind of things that I have seen you know, in Matarbari coming up. Bangladesh uh, need to feed something around 10 million ton cargo, which may not be able to generate. So they need to connect it to in the neighborhood to sustain you know, such kind of projects. Uh, and that is why you know, in my presentation, I said that Northeast India and Bangladesh connectivity. So, so what, you know, to answer to your questions, uh, Khandakar, is that uh, this triangular cooperation is going to give you more, uh, more business, more income, more GDP, uh, and more uh, you know, growth. Uh, the big challenge for Bangladesh is that if once they get their, you know, on the, the trade market access in developed countries, which they have grown up through using quota, if they start disappearing, if, I said the word if, they're not going to disappear on from the 1st January 2026, which I have read in the media, they'll continue to stay. But slowly, slowly, you know, uh, they will disappear as Bangladesh moves up. Uh, so, so in that case, certainly Bangladesh needs quality infrastructure, it's linking with uh, neighborhood, it's, you know, also strengthening it internal uh, supply chain, which Bangladesh alone cannot cannot manage, and you need partner. Bangladesh need partner needs partner like India and uh, and uh, Japan as well. So that's why you know uh, joining a kind of a triangular cooperation, triangular relation, uh, you know, is going to help. Uh, transition is you know, so far transition is smooth, but post uh, elevation would be much better. Yeah, thank you. But these are again, you know, to answer to your questions, these are the good food uh, for thought for doing serious studies, you know, somebody at Saneh or in Bangladesh, anywhere, they need to do some modeling and need to understand, you know, all of them. Yeah. The next question asks why Shafat asked me. Um, I feel he asked, yes, sir. Uh, Shafat Asni Master, do you think that collabor collaboration among Japan uh, quality assurance organization, organization JGWE, who of Indian standards, VIS, and Bangladesh standards and testing institution, VSTI, to ensure mutual certification process is very much needed now? Yes. So you, you are already, you know, have given uh, kind of a project for our, you know, track one to uh, work upon it, you know. JQA, BIS, BSTI, you know, uh, JQA and BSTI, they have some working relation. I am, I know the BIS and BSTI, they have very, as well. So three, three of them coming up with a common standard certification, certainly going to help um, Bangladesh. By the way, there is an example here. Uh, I, I didn't mention in, in or, I have, you know, I have to skip. You know the Japanese uh, company called Uniqlo. Uniqlo, you might be knowing. No, Uniqlo yes. is yes, uh, one of the largest uh, multi-brand uh, retail, uh, uh, you know, in the world. You know, Japanese. Today, you know, uh, Uniqlo is one of the fastest growing uh, retail brand in India, and they have in my city in Delhi. Uh, they have. You know some of the largest departmental store, where you know whenever I go, I buy and uh, garments of different types. Everything there is Bangladesh, H and M, Bangladesh, um, Zara, Bangladesh. So, so the cotton garments, very designed, uh, uh, you know, uh, good quality garments are all made by Bangladesh, Vietnam. And sometimes China and Cambodia, Turkey have seen. So, so already it is happening, you know, that uh, Uniqlo is a Japanese company selling Bangladeshi products. 
uh, using in SAFTA, where Bangladesh and India are fitted partners. And uh, uh, BSTI, BIS, and JQA must be having you know, uh, some kind of an understanding, which I'm not aware of it. That's why uh, you know, they are you know, allowed to uh, hear in the country. So, but a formal relation between the three standard bodies would be a you know, game changer kind of thing. Thank you. I think I have answered all of them. Huh? Yes, sir. Uh, all I the questions are answered. Please out. Um, uh, please uh, write to me, and uh, I will um, again respond. And I'm going to share my PPT to you, and you can share it to all of them, those who are interested. Yes, I will uh, share your contact details and uh, the PPT. Uh, now, um, I kindly request Dr. Selim sir, Executive Director of Sunil, to share his thoughts and con concluding remarks. Uh, thank you, Shakil. And I must thank uh, Dr. Prabhid Dev for an excellent session he conducted, and uh, we are sincerely grateful to him. And I can see the participants who also very patiently listen to this uh, uh, excellent presentation. At the same time, uh, raised some very important questions to which Dr. Prabhid uh, responded very nicely. And some of his, some of his answers were very thought provoking. Uh, so uh, Prabhid, thank you so much. I think it has been a wonderful session. And, Thank uh, you. Uh, and Thank most you. of the most of the participants and uh, many of them are students. They benefited quite a lot. I just want to highlight, based on your uh, presentation and also the kind of ideas you have thrown, few issues. One is that I think I can see that Bangladesh, India, and Japan, this triangular uh, cooperation. Uh, Bangladesh is at the center, and the aircraft you designed, Bangladesh is the main body, and two wings are India and Japan. So when you have the main body as Bangladesh, then that means a huge responsibility is actually there for Bangladesh too, to make this triangular cooperation effective if it is at the center. So here I see that there are uh, many policy level challenges in Bangladesh, which needs to be addressed, uh, especially related to, you know, how do you engage with different FTA or SEPA or, you know, how to attract FDI. Uh, I think Bangladesh still a uh, lot of things needs to be done in its trade policy, in its investment policy, and 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 related various other policies, even in the exchange rate policy as well. There are issues in Bangladesh with respect to the regulatory quality, in, with respect to you know in, implementation of various projects, and many of the many of these projects are uh, infrastructural projects. So what we really need to see that these infrastructural projects they are not isolated or they are not stand alone there must be some very good interlinkages or interlinks or synergies among these uh, you know investment infrastructure so that we, we get the full potentials you know the benefit out of it mataberi is an excellent example and you and i we both visited there together and we see the kind of potential it has but also we understood that it has a huge uh, proposed uh, kind of uh, economic zone, you know, next to it, which are which is yet to be materialized. So, yeah. uh, when it comes to uh, you know the, this, this deep sea port and and added these coal fired power plants, but unless Bangladesh is able to materialize some of the economic zones very quickly and very efficiently, uh, and uh, is not able to attract large scale FDI, then the risk is that many of these big infrastructural projects will remain underutilized. And then you don't really, we don't really get the uh, much needed benefit out of it. So that's why we need to diversify our export basket. And, uh, you know, there's a, the, otherwise, uh, you know, when it comes to this triangular cooperation or going into more SEPA-like trade agreements, uh, if we don't have much things to offer to the other countries, especially with uh, in terms of diversified export basket, the risk is that, you know, you the country gets more and more import dependent and then you see the kind of lobbies in the country who are against FTA, they get their voice very strong. So this is an area where the country needs to work quite a lot in terms mm. of uh, removing the policy level challenges, improving the regulatory quality, improving implementation, improving the quality of implementation so that a large scale FDI can be attracted, you know, these economic zones can be operationalized and we have a very diversified export basket 
which is uh, which uh, you know which is globally competitive and we can actually take the advantage of these trade agreements and and this very uh, very unique uh, i would say triangular cooperation so with this i'd like to thank uh, uh, pravida once again and thank all the participants and this is a, a sun international trade center our as uh, at the begin beginning rafael mentioned that we have four centers and through these four centers so we want to actually promote ideas you know, discussions and research capacity building uh, in different fronts and uh, and we really need your cooperation and your collab and collaboration with you to make this center more effective so with this shakil over to you and you can make the concluding comments um, so i i think that is uh... Uh, with that, we are concluding our first episode of Trade Wings, presented by Sanem International Trade Center. And we extend our sincere gratitude to all our viewers for joining us. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, Salim Bhai, and all the participants uh, for joining uh, to this conversation. And uh, we look forward to have uh, you know further uh, interaction on the subject. And... Um, Thank you very much. Thank Namaskar. you. Thank you, Pravita. Thank you. Thank you. Bye then. Bye. -bye.